Have you ever wondered why losing weight feels so hard and why it's even more difficult to keep the weight off? It's not just about diet and exercise. Our bodies are regulated by a complex set of hormones that control hunger, fullness, and metabolism. In this video, we'll explore the science behind how our bodies regulate weight, talking about hormones like ghrelin and leptin. Understanding this physiology can completely change how we think about dieting, health, and weight overall. The first thing to know is that our weight is regulated by a multi-level complex system involving the brain, the gut, and adipose tissue or fatty tissue. These hormones basically input into the brain and affect things like our sense of hunger, smell, taste, and vision. And to understand this better, just think about a time when you were really hungry. You may have found that the food seemed more appealing or that your sense of smell was even heightened. There's also an emotional aspect, and anyone who's an emotional eater can understand this. Sometimes when stressed, some people eat more, and some people may even eat less. Our brain controls our weight through appetite and metabolism, and it relies on these peripheral signals, or these signals from the gut as well as the adipose tissue, to decide what to do. So our appetite can either increase or decrease along with our metabolism, which in turn affect our overall weight. Let's talk about these peripheral signals, starting with ghrelin. Ghrelin is perhaps one of the most well-known hunger hormones, and it's actually the only known hunger hormone released from the gut. Ghrelin is secreted by the stomach, and so when the stomach is empty, that actually stimulates an increase in ghrelin. And the opposite case here is also true. When the stomach is stretched, which occurs after eating a meal, this leads to a decrease in ghrelin. So ghrelin basically stimulates our appetite, leading to a positive energy balance and therefore weight gain. And as we already mentioned, it's the only known appetite stimulating hormone in the gut. And it's actually pretty powerful. When we look at a lot of these other peripheral signals that really promote a sense of fullness, they're pretty much all trying to counteract the effects of ghrelin. And what's interesting about ghrelin and something that we'll talk about in a future video is that as people lose weight, ghrelin actually goes up. So this means that their sense of hunger actually increases as they lose weight. Patients with obesity may have less of a drop in ghrelin after a meal, which means that they remain hungry during and after their meals. So what are some things that can affect ghrelin? Well, two things that we know of are stress as well as sleep deprivation. So these are two things that patients need to focus on if they're trying to lose weight because it can otherwise hinder their weight loss progress. We know that ghrelin can increase with stress and sleep deprivation, and that may not come as much of a surprise because we know that cortisol, which is also known as our stress hormone, can also promote weight gain. So this is a good segue into bariatric surgery and how it can help patients lose weight. Let's talk about one in particular, sleeve gastrectomy. This is basically where about 80% of the stomach is surgically removed. As a result, ghrelin levels drop significantly, and so patients are less likely to feel hungry. So in a sense, it reduces their appetite through decreased hunger hormones, and also due to the fact that anatomically things have changed, they have less room to work with, and so they get full faster. All right, we've already covered a lot of information, so let's summarize what we've learned so far. Here are the factors that increase ghrelin. Fasting, or when the stomach is empty. Weight loss, so as we talked about, as patients lose weight, their ghrelin levels increase. And then stress and sleep deprivation. Things that decrease ghrelin include meals. And I put an asterisk here because it depends on the type of meal. We know that protein-rich meals suppress ghrelin for longer periods of time. On the other hand, carbohydrate-rich meals may suppress ghrelin faster, but then there's also a faster rebound. And so sometimes patients will notice that if they've eaten a carbohydrate-rich meal, they tend to get hungrier faster. So we've talked about how our brain regulates our weight by increasing or decreasing appetite and metabolism. And it does this with the help of peripheral signals or nearby signals. We've already talked about ghrelin, our hunger hormone, which is produced by our stomach. We also have many other hormones that are produced by the gastrointestinal tract or our gut, and I have them listed here. We won't go through each of these in detail, but the main thing to know is that ghrelin is so powerful as a hunger hormone that these five hormones listed are meant to counteract the effects of ghrelin. So these five hormones suppress appetite while ghrelin is actually there to stimulate appetite. Let's now talk about a different hormone that's actually not produced in the gut, but is actually produced by our fat cells, leptin. 
Leptin is a hormone that, as you mentioned, is produced by body fat, but it's also proportional to body fat mass. So the more body fat that a person has, the more leptin that they have. And leptin is a very powerful hormone that's responsible for long-term signaling of body weight. We talked about how ghrelin is a powerful hormone, but it really works more on the short-term level when it comes to stimulating appetite. Leptin, on the other hand, actually corresponds to how much body fat a person carries and it really signals to the brain the status of our energy storage so how much energy we're actually storing there are actually two different pathways in the brain one which promotes weight gain and one which promotes weight loss we already alluded to the weight gaining pathway in the brain when we talked about ghrelin because we talked about how ghrelin increases appetite leading to a positive energy balance and therefore weight gain on the other hand leptin actually stimulates the weight losing pathway in the brain and so it opposes ghrelin here So as a person's body fat increases, leptin increases along with this. Leptin then signals to the brain that there is enough energy storage and that there's no need to eat any further, preventing any further weight gain. But you may be wondering what happens in obesity here, as patients with obesity often find that they'll keep gaining that weight or have difficulty preventing further weight gain. It's thought that in obesity, patients have a component of leptin resistance. So although body fat is increasing, leptin may not be functioning or working the way that it should be. Let's now compare our two key players that we've discussed, leptin and ghrelin. Leptin, as we've said, suppresses appetite while ghrelin stimulates appetite. As a result, leptin promotes a negative energy balance, while ghrelin promotes a positive energy balance. An energy balance here refers to calories in minus calories out. So energy balance here is really a reflection of appetite as well as metabolism. So calories that we're taking in as well as how we're using those calories. Let's focus in on calories out, which we can define through energy expenditure, which is basically the amount of energy your body uses to perform all functions. And it consists of four key components, your basal metabolic rate or resting metabolic rate, thermic effect of food, which is the amount of energy needed to digest, absorb, and store food, Physical activity refers to your structured, planned activities throughout the day, while your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, or NEAT, refers to all other activities like walking, doing chores, basically the activities that are not structured into the day. In the next video, we're going to talk a lot about energy expenditure and how this ties into metabolism, what it can inform us about weight management, particularly how it can help us when it comes to weight loss. In this video, we discuss a lot about the physiology behind weight management. There's still a lot more to discuss, and so I will see you in the next video.